Good morning. I welcome you to St. John's in our worship today as we rejoice and give thanks to our God with the gift of our Savior, Jesus. Uh, at this time, uh, we stand to uh, greet and welcome one another with the peace of our Lord Jesus. If you're able, we invite you to please stand as we call upon the name of our God who has placed his name upon us in our baptisms. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your holy name, amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his only Son to die for you, and for his sake he forgives you all of your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I forgive you all of your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We continue with the Kyrie. 
In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Let us pray together. Lord Jesus Christ, we implore you to hear our prayers and to lighten the darkness of our hearts by your gracious visitation. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. The Old Testament uh, reading for the third Sunday in Advent comes from the prophet Zephaniah chapter 3. Sing aloud, O daughter of Zion. Shout, O Israel. Rejoice and exult with all your heart, O daughter of Jerusalem. The Lord has taken away the judgments against you. He has cleared away your enemies. The King of Israel, the Lord, is in your midst. You shall never again fear evil. On that day it shall be said to Jerusalem, Fear not, O Zion. Let not your hands grow weak. The Lord your God is in your midst, a mighty one who will save. He will rejoice over you with gladness. He will quiet you by his love. He will exult over you with loud singing. I will gather those of you who mourn for the festival, so that you will no longer suffer reproach. Behold, at that time I will deal with all your oppressors, and I will save the lame and gather the outcast. 
And I will change their shame into praise and renown in all the earth. At that time I will bring you in. At the time when I gather you together. For I will make you renowned and praised among all the peoples of the earth. When I restore your fortunes before your eyes, says the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. We continue with musical offering by the Handbell Choir. Thank you, Handbells, for sharing your gift of music with us today. Our uh, reading is from Paul's letter to the Philippians chapter 4. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say rejoice. Let your reasonableness be known to everyone. The Lord is at hand. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. This is the word of the Lord. And in honor and reverence of our Savior Jesus, we stand to sing the Alleluia. Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the seventh chapter. The disciples of John reported all these things to him, and John, calling two of his disciples to him, sent them to the Lord, saying, Are you the one who is to come, or shall we look for another? And when the men had come to him, they said, John the Baptist has sent us to you, saying, Are you the one who is to come, or shall we look for another? In that hour he healed many people of diseases and plagues and evil spirits, and on many who were blind he bestowed sight. And he answered them, Go and tell John what you have seen and heard. The blind receive their sight, 
the lame walk, lepers are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead are raised up, the poor have good news preached to them. And blessed is the one who is not offended by me. When John's messengers had gone, Jesus began to speak to the crowds concerning John. What did you go out into the wilderness to see? A reed shaken by the wind? What then did you go out to see? A man dressed in soft clothing? Behold, those who are dressed in splendid clothing and live in luxury are in king's courts. What then did you go out to see? A prophet? Yes, I tell you, and more than a prophet. This is he of whom it is written, Behold, I send my messenger before your face, who will prepare your way before you. I tell you, among those born among of women, none is greater than John. Yet the one who is least in the kingdom of God is greater than he. This is the gospel of the Lord. You may welcome the children to come forward for the children's message. And as they're doing so, we invite you to fill out the visitor and member cards that are found in the pews. If you have prayer requests, you may include those on the back of the cards and we'll include them in our prayers this morning. And uh, we also ask that you would take a moment to review the statements that are found in the back of the cards for preparation for the Lord's Supper this day. Squeeze by you here. It is a present. All right, it's a big one too, isn't it? Well, we're going to find out in just a little bit. But what are some of the things that you joy during this season? What things are you joyous about at Christmas time? The what? The elf shelf. Yeah, that's kind of a fun thing. Little, he's always tricky and moving all over the place, isn't he? Yeah, that can be a fun and joyous thing. What are some other things that give you joy this time of year? Maybe lights and Christmas trees and spending time with your family is a joyous thing, right? Yeah, that's lots of fun, especially when they come from Arizona, right? Yeah, it's fun to see uh, family when they come from far away. All right, that sounds like fun too. So there's lots of things that give us joy this time of year, but I think this is probably one of the things that gives us greatest joy, right? A lot of joy uh, for people with presents, right? Yeah, opening presents and giving presents gives gives us lots and lots of joy, doesn't it? But do we kind of some can we kind of, uh, get sad sometimes during this time of year too? Yeah, even with all of the joy, we can still get sad a little bit, right? And be disappointed. Maybe, maybe a, a loved one has, has died and they're not here for Christmas this year. And that can be kind of a sad thing, right? Or maybe uh, a loved one we know uh, is sick or they're hurt. And that can be kind of sad too, right? Yeah, there's lots of things that can make us sad. Maybe our parents don't get along all the time, or maybe we don't always listen to what mom and dad have to say and we get in trouble, right? And that can be a pretty sad thing too. But we can always have joy because of the wonderful gift that God has given to us. So you guys want to see what's in this giant present? Yes. All right. Here we go. What do we have? Jesus on the cross, right? Yeah. Yeah. That's right. And that's the greatest gift that God gives to us. God gave us uh, the gift of his son who was born as a tiny baby, born in Bethlehem, who grew up to live a sinless life and live a perfect life that we don't always do a very good job at, right? 
And he loved us so much that he suffered and died on that cross to take away all of our sins. And he rose again so that we can have life forever with him. A life that's not filled with pain and sadness and sin and death. And that's a pretty joyous thing to have, right? So we give thanks to God and rejoice because of the gift of our Savior, Jesus. And, uh, and so even when we're feeling a little bit sad, we can still rejoice because Jesus has come to be in our midst and he forgives us of all of our sins and he gives us life forever with him. So let's pray and we'll invite all of God's joyful people to uh, pray with us today. We pray. Dear God, thank you for the gift of Jesus and his forgiveness, his life, and salvation that he gives to us so that even when we're sad, we can rejoice in him. In your name we pray. Amen. Thank you. Return to your seats and we'll continue with our sermon hymn. Grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God our Father and from our risen and living Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. You may be seated. Bah! Bah humbug. That's an attitude that many people have during what's supposed to be a very joyous time of year. They're, uh, they're feeling a little bit depressed, maybe a little blue. They're frustrated. They're stressed out. And so what's supposed to be a wonderful time of year isn't always that wonderful. Maybe it's because partly they're, uh, they've got unrealistic expectations, that they're dreaming of a Norman Rockwell type of Christmas, but what they really get is something a little bit more close to a good old-fashioned Griswold family Christmas. Or maybe it's partly because they 
try to cram in way too many things in such a short amount of time. We've got all the baking to do. We've got shopping to do, presents to wrap, uh, houses to decorate. We've got parties to attend. There's just so many things to do. Or maybe it's partly because they've forgotten the true uh, understanding of this season. They misunderstand what this season is really all about. They get all mixed up and tied up into a secularized, commercialized, materialized, Americanized version of Christmas rather than the celebration of our Savior's birth and giving worship to the one who has come to us as a tiny baby born in Bethlehem who would grow up to lead a sinless life, to restore our joy through his suffering, death, and resurrection for us. And so it would seem that there are certainly many reasons for us not to rejoice. We've sinned, and that's certainly no reason to rejoice. In the days of uh, Zephaniah, God's people had stood under judgment. They were under God's judgment, his wrath, for two and a half uh, of the three chapters of Zephaniah. Uh, The prophet is sounding warnings of punishment and destruction and judgment against God's people and against the nations around them. It was a doom and gloom type of message. And the day was coming when Jerusalem would be destroyed, when uh, God would send Babylon into their midst, led by King Nebuchadnezzar to, uh, to take down Judah, to destroy the holy city. And fifth, over 50, a little over 50 years later, this prophecy would be fulfilled as Babylon took the uh, survivors from the destruction of Jerusalem and led them into captivity, into exile, into Babylon. And it was all because they had rebelled against their God. God's people had rebelled against them. They refused to repent of their sins and they turned away from God and worshipped false idols. And so this was certainly no time to rejoice. And we too as God's people, have sinned. As God's people today, we continue to sin and rebel, and that's no reason to rejoice. We were not content with the, with the things that God has given to us. We always want so much more. We slander the people around us. We slander people on the internet. We refuse to speak well of them and put the best construction on things. Instead, we often look for the worst in people. We're greedy and we lack generosity. We defile marriage with sexual uh, promiscuity. We hate those who don't agree with us. We disrespect authority. We skip worship and Bible study. We fail to give thanks and praise to God at all times and in every circumstance. And we idolize our career, our politics, our family, our sports, our leisure, our health, and ourselves. Yes, we are sinful people. And that's certainly nothing to rejoice about. And because of our sin, we live in a sin-filled world, a broken world. And that's no reason to rejoice either. Because of our sin, our world is so completely broken that our relationships uh, at home, at work, at school, at church often suffer. Marriages fall apart. Parents and children yell and scream at one another. Friendships end. We get fired or we quit our jobs. We fail. In our classes. Because of our sin, we suffer physically and mentally, emotionally, and spiritually. Our lives are filled with death and disease, pain and addiction. 
And because of our sin, the world is also filled with all kinds of evil. We see the wars going on all around the world, violence in our own neighborhoods. Immorality is running wild, as defined by ourselves rather than defined by God's morals. We fight with one another over politics and over pandemic. We're angered or we live in fear. The unborn and the elderly are devalued and they're often put to death. Young girls are sold for sex and the list could just go on and on and on with all the ways that our world is broken and corrupted by our sin. And so we look at all of these problems in our world. We look at the troubles in our own lives. We look at our own sin. And yes, it can be hard to rejoice. And yet we have every reason to rejoice. After those two and a half chapters of doom and gloom, Zephaniah ends his prophecy with a restored joy, restoring the joy of God's people as God has promised to them that he would take away their judgment, he would destroy their enemies, he promised that he would be in their midst and that he would save them. God promised to gather his people together again to restore their fortunes and bring them back out of exile, bringing them back to the land that God had promised to give them as their home. And he kept all of these promises. He returned the exiles to Jerusalem where they would rebuild the city, they'd rebuild the temple, they would gather together and rejoice in God their Savior. But ultimately, God kept these promises for you. For you, His church. You, O oh, daughter of Zion. O oh, you, of, uh, daughter of Jerusalem. God has restored His church. He has come into our midst. He comes into our midst as a tiny little baby born in Bethlehem. He comes into our midst to take on full humanity, to take on human flesh, to experience the uh, the things that we experience, to experience our struggles, our temptations, our trials. He takes our sins upon Himself to suffer and to die in our place to rescue us and to save us from our sins, to save us from our enemies of sin, death, and the devil. He comes into our midst to heal us of every disease and to give us eternal life. He comes into our midst to restore our relationships with one another, to restore our relationships at home, to restore our relationships as a church, to restore our relationship, most importantly, with Him. And so Jesus fulfilled that promise as He came into this world to dwell among us. That by His death on the cross and His resurrection from the grave, He has restored our joy. For God has taken away the judgment that we deserve by pouring out His wrath upon His Son upon the cross. Dying the death that we deserve because of all of our sins. For in Jesus, all of your sins have been forgiven. And for that, we rejoice. And Jesus continues to come into our midst. He comes to us in word and He comes to us in sacrament. He comes to us whenever we hear and read His word, to hear His uh, promises of grace and love and mercy, to hear that good news of the gospel that is preached to those who are poor in spirit, who need His grace and love forever. He comes to us in the waters of holy baptism where He washes away all of our sins. He comes to us in the absolution that forgives us of all of our sins. He comes to us in body and blood with the bread and wine to feed and nourish us, to sustain our faith so that we have our sins forgiven. And for this, we rejoice. And yet Jesus is also going to come again. 
He's going to come again to fully restore that joy by bringing us out of our exile. To bring us out of the exile of our sin. To bring us into that eternal home. That home that He has promised to us in His heavenly reign where there is no pain, where there is no suffering. Where there's no sin or death, no disease or evil. And we will stand in the presence of our Savior forever. And for this, we rejoice. So sing and cry out, O daughter of Zion. Rejoice and exalt, O daughter of of Jerusalem. Rejoice, O church. For Jesus has come to save you from your sins, to forgive you of all your sins, to end your judgment, to destroy your enemy, and to restore your joy. Amen. We now stand uh, with joy to give thanks uh, in confessing our triune God who has created us and redeemed us and sanctified us that we might be filled with the joy of his promises for us in confessing the Nicene Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of the God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten of a... by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins. And I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. You may be seated and we thank you for uh, sharing your gifts uh, uh, that God has given to you with your tithes and offerings. Uh, Offering boxes are located at the entrance of the sanctuary and may also give online. Uh, Our love offering, uh, at least for the first half of this month, is going specifically for uh, Christmas meals through the Contact Center, Uh, and then I believe uh, just general donations to the Contact Center through the uh, rest of the month. Uh, We uh, give thanks and praise to God through our offertory. We pray for the whole church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Heavenly Father, you rescued the daughter of Zion from her enemies and take away the judgments against her. And look with compassion upon your people wherever they suffer for Jesus' name's sake. And give them wisdom that when they are pressured to compromise, provide when they suffer loss, give courage when they are afraid, and strengthen them in the midst of the persecution until you deliver them. Preserve them always in the joyful hope that you will restore all that is lost with what cannot be taken away from us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, 
as you once sent messengers before the face of Jesus to prepare his way. So strengthen and encourage all pastors and DCEs, teachers and missionaries, and all other church workers as they make known his saving name. Open the ears of all who hear that they would rejoice and repent and firmly believe in Christ our Savior. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O God of all gifts, uh, look upon the households of your people. Provide companionship for those who are alone. Strengthen the bonds of marriage and equip parents to raise their children in love and faith. Grant that our homes may be places of joy and reasonableness, peace and prayer. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, you have set prisoners free. Remember all those who are in prison and grant that they might repent and be freed from the clutches of sin, accept the consequences of their wrongdoing, and learn to live honestly and peacefully. Remember all those who have been imprisoned unjustly. Restore their freedom according to your will, and preserve them in your grace and in the confidence that you know uh, what is true and just. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, your Son became flesh and healed the sick of all kinds of diseases and afflictions demonstrating his power and giving us a foretaste of the resurrection on the last day. Have mercy upon all those who are in need of your, uh, of your care. We pray for all those who are struggling with cancer, for Tracy and Tara and Jared, Glenn and Jean and Beverly and Lindy, for Marlis and Emily, Stacy and Brian, for Laura and Vonda, Scott and Debbie. We pray for Emily and Jolene and David. Uh, heal all those who uh, have been hospitalized or are struggling with other kinds of health issues, especially for Dee and Colette, Tiffany and Jim and Andrew, Clint, Jorgen, uh, Jet and Teresa, Lydia and David and Lucas, Brevin, Teresa, Marlene, Lynn and Dawn. Uh, continue to bless the recovery of Lois and Nathan, David and Stan and Diana, Angela and Sandy and Larry and Jan and Harold and Thomas, Tori, Henry and Frankie, Mason, Beverly, Linda, Daryl, Bill, Fred, Alvin and Donna. Comfort those who mourn, especially the families of Esther Conrad, Roy Voracek, uh, Carol Martin and Doris Albrecht. Comfort Chelsea and her family as she mourns the death of her father and for Alice Rokar, mourning the death of her sister, Nita. Heal them in your time and according to your will, and preserve them in the confidence that you, will re- uh, that you will deliver your people from all afflictions at the resurrection of all flesh. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And Lord, we rejoice with all those who rejoice, and today we rejoice with Addie and giving thanks uh, to you for the gift of life as she celebrates her 98th birthday this week. Uh, we pray that you would continue to, um, to be in her midst and, uh, and grant her uh, life by your name. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord God, the Son of Man came eating and drinking with sinners that he might proclaim the kingdom and welcome them with the forgiveness of sins as he hosts his supper this day for repentant sinners. Uh, Grant that those who partake in his body and blood would be worthy and well-prepared, firmly believing in the words given and shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, into your hands we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We continue now uh, with the preparation of the Lord's uh, Supper, and we stand. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Amen. 
It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, whose way John the Baptist prepared, proclaiming him the promised Messiah, the very Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world, and calling sinners to repentance, that they might escape from the wrath that is to be revealed when he comes again in glory. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, Lord, remember us in your uh, name and uh, teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night that he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. The same way also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he blessed it and gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of our Lord Jesus be with you always.
stand to give thanks to God with the post-communion canticle. Let us pray. Gracious God, our Heavenly Father, you have given us a foretaste of the feast to come and the holy supper of your Son's body and blood. Keep us firm in the true faith throughout our days of pilgrimage, that on the day of his coming, we may, together with all your saints, celebrate and rejoice in the marriage feast of the Lamb and his kingdom, which has no end. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you peace. Amen. You may be seated for our closing hymn. Good morning. Rejoice. Uh, we give thanks to God for uh, all that he gives to us. Uh, just a reminder that this week, uh, this Wednesday, is our final 
uh, midweek Advent uh, service at 10 in the morning and 7 p.m. And we're blessed this week to have Pastor Matthew Bless from uh, Concordia and Vermilion as our uh, guest preacher this week. Uh, and uh, he's also the campus uh, ministry pastor at uh, USD. And so we highly encourage any uh, families that have students attending USD or uh, thinking about sending students uh, to, to USD to uh, come uh, this Wednesday, uh, meet Pastor Bless and get acquainted with him uh, 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 and the campus ministry over at USD. Um, oops. Oops, there we go. Oh, we're going too fast now. All right, um, and then a reminder of our Christmas services, uh, 4.30 and 7 p.m. on Christmas Eve with our candlelight service. And uh, note the change in time for Christmas Day, shifting from 9 o'clock to 9.30. Uh, so on Christmas Day, we'll be worshiping at 9.30. And then on the 26th, uh, just one worship service uh, at 9.30 in the morning, and that will be followed by a time of fellowship. Uh, bring your extra Christmas goodies that you haven't gotten to eat, uh, eat up yet. We'll sing some carols, and Pastor Levi uh, will lead us in a uh, Christmas discussion uh, following that, uh, that service on the 26th. And... I must be covering for Josh today. Uh, the uh, children's Christmas party for second through fifth graders are, uh, is today uh, following services um, uh, from 12 to 3. And uh, the children's uh, Sunday school Christmas program is next Sunday at uh, 6 p.m. All in, are invited to attend as the children share the Christmas story with us. And just one last rehearsal uh, this coming Saturday as well. I believe that's all the announcements that I've got. You got any more, Josh? All right, so we're good to go. God's blessings to you and rejoice in his name.